Hello, everyone. Hello, this is uh, Visionless Dave. Well, good evening, folks. Welcome to Gathering of the Goats. I am Menas. My fellow goat will be here soon, just running a bit late, training his pit bulls to attack babies or something. But welcome, welcome, welcome. What a night. What a night of entertainment on the Kirk Menahan Show Network with um, Mike and the Minna fans. Two weeks in a row, an absolute clusterfuck, an absolute disaster. Joe is by far the best producer of that show. We had last week a disgraceful effort at Gritty's absolute disaster. Um, John and the network failed their first test and um, we saw it. Kirk passed every test. Kirk did a great show on Saturday night. The Redemption to, the redemption show uh, came to fruition. But last Friday night, it was the first event since the uh, birth of the Kirk Minahan Show Network and, and and John from Scranton wasn't even at Gritty's for Mike and the Minna fans. It was just a complete d- disaster. And then tonight we had um, Mike and the Minna fans opening with John hosting and then we had fucking Vodka, who's fantastic, but certainly not in Kirk's good, good books at the moment. So he was on the show. And we also had Fuss Daddy, that snake, uh, liven up a bit later on when we had a baseball player called PRC Coleman turn up and then Mama K. But, you know, really you can tell that Mike and the Minna fans is on a not even a slow decline. It's on a rapid decline like that whole fucking network. I mean, um, Vodka dropped the F slur on Kirk's channel. You know, that, that could basically, you know, be a strike and take them off the internet. They could be floundering very soon looking for a home. Um, so yeah, look, they'll be, they'll be scrambling over there. You know, when the F slur was dropped on this network in the past, I went in and cleaned up the audio, took it out and reposted it. But, you know, I wonder if John could be bothered doing that or if he's, you know, too busy fucking doing lines and shooting fucking Jack. Um, and good evening, my fellow goat visionless Dave. What is shooting Jack? Um, I don't know. I was just vamping while I was waiting for you to turn up. But doing um, shooting crack, I was going to say. There you go. Crack. crack. I've heard of that that one. I haven't heard of Jack. Um, How are you doing tonight? I I heard about the incident. I haven't seen the clip myself. I won't watch the clip. Um, I will be boycotting the Kirk Minahan Network for seven days Mm. in solidarity with the community that was affected. And... Um, I think vodka went too far. I think so too. And, you know, I, I, I think there's been so much progress made, um, with KMS and a more inclusive attitude. I think the men as men fan network has always mm. stood for inclusivity and regardless of, um, you, you know, your e- ethnic persuasion, your sexual persuasion. Um, but clearly it's not the same across the street that, that, um, you know, they support that kind of prejudice and foul language. And I just wonder what will happen when that channel gets taken down my YouTube and, and Kirk's got, uh, Kirk's got to explain to Portnoy that, uh, that that's been taken down because he put John from Scranton in charge of Mike and the Minna fans. Um, I, I did my best to bring that possibility to his attention. And, uh, as a friend, that's all I could do from, from here on out. I hope it doesn't happen, but it is, it is a real risk. It can even be from something not like as Kirk knows from surviving Barstool. It can be something that isn't even a slur. It can be something Mm -hmm. innocuous, you know, and if they decide, um, that it's bad, there's really not much of a, not much you can do about it. Well, well, on entertainment value for most of the shows on that channel now, you could just 
on that principle, you could take it off YouTube. I mean, that's a, apart from actually the Kirk Minahan show, there's no value in any of the shows being posted there. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a fucking cavalcade of talentless fucks that clout chasing assholes that um, I had to pretend were talented uh, for six months running this network. Now I can honestly say they're, they're not the drips. Um, you know, there's a few talented people in the miniverse and most of the people with shows there aren't, aren't in that list. Um, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, so, I, I, so I was saying before you got here, Friday night failure for the Kirk Minahan show network. They had Mike and the Minna fans at Gritties. That was the first real test of John from Scranton's leadership. And it was a clusterfuck. They did a 30 minute show. When you have cinema Lord speaking sense, you know, you're in trouble, but that was the only real disaster of the weekend. I was sniffing around on Saturday night for any controversy, any trouble, any sound issues, any problems, and couldn't find anything. By all reports, it was a great show. And most of it landed. The, the, the crowds were happy. The sound was good. So um, congratulations to Kirk. Congratulations to Coleman. Congratulations to Justin. Um, what really about your me. deleted tweet from Friday night? Well, Okay, we can we, we can hit that one as well. But uh, just before we get into that, there are a couple of controversial things that did happen from the show in Portland. Um, so it, was, it, it hasn't been widely reported, but I, I heard there was actually some backlash at the Justin Baby skit that there was a few people seriously offended by what they saw. Um, wow. And some people left, some people... Um, I think even messaged Kirk and complained about that it was a step too far. Um, Kirk's, uh, you know, definitely a minority, you know, but I, I can, can, you know, people left because of that. And um, did they go too far? I don't know. I didn't say it, but it uh, sounds pretty offensive. Um, yeah, like, I mean, it's a joke on every single show, though. I have no sympathy for the people, unless you're you're like the spouse of someone that gets dragged up. But they literally make the pedophile joke every single episode. What so about to like be... pictures of dead babies and stuff? I mean, I think that was what was going up on the screen. Um, I think outrage was the exact emotion that was uh, meant to be conjured. So mm. it, it's pretty obvious. You just, I, I understand. Maybe some people are um offended by that but they don't get to make the rules of what happens at I, a I agree. comedy show luckily so i Absolutely. have very little sympathy for those people i didn't see any of that but um it'd be interesting to hear those people's perspective you know mm. i get yeah, it maybe you're like a um maybe you had a some kind of personal incident in your life the death of a baby or something i could see mm. how you know it, it goes out the window there I, I have sympathy for that but um yeah, I guess that's just how it goes. Yeah, and I, I'm with you that that I think if you go to a KMS show, you have to have a pretty thick skin and expect there's going to be offensive jokes and stuff. But, yes, what I'm saying is the night was not uh, controversy-free completely. I mean, also not. the other, con other, other controversy, and we probably should have led the show. Can you say this. controversy? Because I know that's how you actually say it. <laughs> the other controversy is yeah. Mikey Moonface Montante leaving a song early to check his bets, um, as revealed that, on the FOMO show. We didn't were breaking he, stories. Didn't he leave the last one early too? Yeah, he. Yeah, it's yeah, absolutely. The one where he, he, they, so he's just on a streak of leaving shows early. Yes, but I, I don't think people who haven't been in Montante's presence understand how transfix he gets with gambling and alcohol oh yeah like yeah you, you know when, when i went out with him when i was at the wilbur you know he's looking over you the whole time like he's still talking to you but he's looking at a tv behind you in yeah. a baseball game he's got a bet on like you know everywhere he goes he looks what's on okay i'm going to put a bet on and you you know it, he he's completely consumed so i can understand him Leaving yeah early. i mean uh, also a guy like that kind of a you know fan favorite mini celeb uh you got to get out of there early you know otherwise he's just gonna get hounded mm, true um, true so you gotta kind of beat that rush out there you don't want to be standing in line mm. you know having to pee he's he's got to get out of there he's got to get the car out of there um probably a back entrance situation 
mm. in the future would help would help uh, avoid people seeing him leave. But yeah, it's a yellow card for for Mikey. Yeah, yellow card for Mikey. Um, you you asked about the deleted tweet um, of mm. mine on Saturday night. So I had a great fun doing the FOMO show. We broke a lot of stories. We were, you know, giving uh, unprecedented coverage of all the activities at Portland. Uh, we, you know, we broke the Mayo story that he wasn't there. Uh, look, we, look, we were all over it. And I, I didn't want to take credit for one of Vodka's assertions. So basically, Vodka is asserting, and apparently you agree with him, that Kirk may have been inebriated on Friday night at Mike and the Minute fans. Now, no, I I'm, don't agree with him. I agree 100% that it sounded mm, like exactly, he was fucked exactly. up. 100. But my head, I went there for a split second. Is he drunk? But it was just, just no way. Um, that lisp, as my guy, Little People, Big World guy said, it doesn't travel well. Sometimes mm -hmm. it like, you know, when he's on these on-site recordings and it's not, you know, the studio setup, that that lisp can kind of like catch a wave. Uh, it used to happen all the time during the case, during the case shows when they were doing KMS while they're on the road. Um, yeah, I don't think, I think there was maybe a 0.1% a, a chance that he was drunk and that's just because it can never be zero, but... No, I don't think so. Yeah, and look, I don't really think he was either, but um, it did I sound tweeted like it out. It, it can't be a yes. thing where it's like, oh, I don't know why anyone was saying this. Mm. Like, Justin and them are like, what? Whoa. How are you? Exactly. I'm like, listen so, to it. You can hear it. Yeah. yeah. So two things Vodka said make a lot of sense. If an alcoholic falls off the wagon, a lot of the time they deny it anyway. So Kirk saying he's not drunk is not really great evidence because, you know, you, you would deny it. Um, so vodka was right about that. He was hundred percent right about that. And secondly, Kirk jokes about all types of shit. Like even if vodka's half joking that Kirk was drunk, that's fine to joke about. It's not off limits. Um, but yeah, I put out a tweet allegedly, or I think, you know, rumors that Kirk was drunk on Friday night, but I'm, I was doing the show at the same time and I meant to credit as per Dr. Vodka. Um, Got it. so I, and I didn't really want to take credit for Vodka's take. And then you, once you delete it, you can't repost it. So it's gone. Um, Why didn't you just edit it? I didn't have blue t uh, blue tick anymore. Well, I've never had a blue tick. So uh, that's Really? Why. You're you're an unverified bad boy? I am a bad boy. Not even unverified. Just a fucking bad boy. <laughs> this is the bad boy network. Um, so great show. Um, I mean, what I picked up from is uh, the more time goes on, the more and more I hate Steve from Gloucester. He's just. I've been getting a lot of that. Yeah. I've been getting a lot of that. Yeah. Um, he's just very annoying and it, he seems to have let this whole thing get to his head. You know, poor Casey Smith having to endure a dance with him and pretend to be nice to him. I mean, she's a sweetheart she's and a very good liar to pretend that that was bearable steve does uh i get i get the hate but he does still crack me up like after he the after the live show ended he, he put up a tweet speaking of the edit function so i like saw the original tweet go up because i'm on twitter you know i want to see everybody's response and then like 90 seconds later i see another one and i'm like oh he edited it and then like two minutes later, it's another one. <laughs> and he ended up editing the tweet four times. And you could click it and see the whole edit history about little things he fixed. And I don't know why, but that just really, it really cracked me up. Mm. I, I, what I don't like about him is I just don't know what the real Steve from Gloucester is. Like I, He just seems to sort of fucking float in the wind, which whichever the way the wind is going. But he'll just that, go is, that, that is the real him. He just floats with the wind. There, that I can be a personality type in itself yeah, um, yeah. I, I don't think he's entertaining i don't think he's talented i don't think he does particularly well when he goes in there on studio although i don't think he's bad for um one one you know one well, he, he gets something. he he definitely gets kid gloves from kirk like kirk never tries to rile him up too much or he hasn't kirk hasn't put the heat on him yet i imagine it will come at one point or another um but you know he likes to fuck with everybody that goes in there he doesn't really do that with steve i don't know if it's like uh i don't know i don't know why mm. i don't like um, the whole italian bit 
Oh yeah, people, the surprise people, pretends. People surprise don't people don't me. like this take, but Italian Americans are not Italians. They are nothing like Italians. Go over to Italy. No, they're, they're Americans they're, with a bad yeah. Italian accent. Yeah, they're they're just trash bag Americans, and they slap mm. the beautiful Italian name onto that. Yep. When in reality, they they are nothing like um like Italians. Nothing. Well, that's a hot but, take. That's a hot take. Yeah, they don't like that take when I say it. No, it's a hot take. Um. Also, I've heard reports that the first two rows of the Portland show, there's been a number of cases of shingles break out after the mutt dance. Apparently, he was like sweating and spitting, and um. So yeah, I think there's up to a dozen cases of the shingles so far, just from those front two rows. It was very funny when he tried to shoot the gun, and then it doesn't work, and he like kind of looks at it and shakes it, and he tries to shoot it again. I I watched that part of the clip many times. That was very funny. Mm, I was yeah. watching the KMS scenes video last night. I don't know if you've seen Ooh, it. Oh, I haven't seen it where... yet. I didn't know it came out. It came out um well last night my time this morning your See, time. The, but it, you... There's so much bullshit on that network that sometimes you miss the stuff you actually want to see because mm. it's there's so much five terrible day, oh i don't want this i don't want so it slides down to the end of my youtube algorithm mm. um because it's like oh don't want this don't want this youtube notices that i'm watching it way less so it's getting yeah down. yeah that's probably why kms views are going down but so there is some good behind the scenes stuff but uh, speaking of the gun, like there's a bit where Julie comes in with the money gun and she gives it to Mutt and it doesn't work. And then Julie's trying to fix it and she's getting all like um, concerned about it and going, oh, you know, I'll fix it. Um, so, yeah, it's it's pretty pretty funny, uh, the KMS scenes. Steve Rate, Robinson rated out of five. Hammered, uh, three and a half stars. They're, there's a bit long in bits and – um be too much of like they they do a whole recreation of they sorry they filmed the whole rehearsal of the steve from gloucester and casey dance so you know you get you get a lot of fucking lispy steve do you think what Kirk he, turned both his ex-producers into alcoholics because it wasn't culinary shit face too yes, like y yes there's, they there's both a, were, I mean, not a coincidence well, I think there's sort of a post post traumatic stress disorder that probably comes I'm saying. comes when you've worked with Kirk, but I guess as a you know as a, a Robinson fan, are you disappointed? Uh, you know how hammered he was. No, I want Big Steve hammered, walking around with his gun, <laughs> flat flashing his gun to people, throwing footballs Shooting across the people. parking lot. That's the exact Steve Robinson I want. Yeah, okay, that's good. peak Steve. That's peak Steve. Mm, yeah. I think it's funny that it is It is like they will never admit it, but for Steve and Cullinane, it's a great night for them. They love the attention. They love the, the Minna fans. Oh, yeah. and, it's, and it's the perfect night because they can get all the good stuff and they have get no in, responsibility. Get out. Yeah. It's like yeah, me being get all the love. I, I, I go visit my nieces. Oh, I'm giving everybody candy. I'm the best. And then mm. I just leave the next day and I, got, I don't have to deal with any of the bullshit. It's a great feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other controversy was, you know, Greg Poehler, you know, he has shows on Netflix, Amazon Prime, but he can't seem to make a video funny enough to make the KMS show. Um, bit of a slight on Poehler there. Maybe Amy you should have done he, it. Do you think he, uh, he made one and it got X'd or you think that he just doesn't even get asked anymore? No, no, he got, he made one and it didn't make the cut. That's what they didn't said on the Monday's show. So. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So good enough for Amazon Prime, not good enough for Kirk's show. Um, and just one one thing that seems to come out from the weekend, and I've heard this from a number of sources, is that Julie was just horny all weekend. So I'm not shaming people because sex is a beautiful thing. People should embrace their sexuality. God knows I embrace my sexuality and, you know, mm -hmm. I want people to, to, to be, have, you know, healthy, happy sex lives. But um, it sounds like Julie, you know, her healthy, happy sex life was, you know, a big part of the weekend. Would you hit that? Hmm. Um, <laughs> I've never met Julie in person, so I don't know if there'd be any chemistry in person. BD. I'm not going to say no. Like a, I mean, she's, she's a, a middle lady. She's a, she's a middle she's lady. A, she's a, 
she's a female montante that's the best way to think of her yeah except well, instead of being that's the degenerate kind of. gambler she's a um you know addicted to kirk but same thing she's a total booze hound sleaze bag mm -hmm. in a good way I, I mean i like montante but they were in another life they were maybe meant for each other <laughs> um yeah that's jewel comparing her to montante made my penis disappear it just like went inside my body <laughs> I ran away at the thought. Um, have you got any takes you want to get off your chest? I've got a few more things I want to bring up, but no, you, let it rip. I, I might have um, I might have one that I'll get to, but I, I want to hear yours first. Jay's calling me. Well, uh, Jay's calling. Um, I, his number. I, I think I guess the biggest um takeaway from the weekend was, you know, Kirk's relief, the victory lap. The, the fact that there was so much on the line and he pulled it off. He did everything. Um, you could hear it on Monday. You know, I, I don't think people grasp how he affected Kirk was by the Plymouth disaster. Stop talking to Jay and listen. I am, I am, I, I am listening. Um, I think uh, that's the other reason I don't think Kirk would ever be drunk at a show is I, I think he legitimately mm. uh, cares. If he's going to relapse, it would be alone, uh, like at his Vermont house, you know, like people like him don't relapse and go out. You relapse and you like, uh, or you get fucked up for the first time in a long time and you like stay in a hotel room for 48 hours. It's not like you go and mm. do a live show. That's, that's not how that works. No. no yeah. Um, he takes it very seriously. Definitely, definitely. But yeah, I mean, I was ha glad to see Kirk so um, happy and he's taking this week off. I think he's a good thing. And then he's in Chicago next week. So we'll get, I think we'll get a show next week. Kirk is addicted to the clout. Like you won't admit it, but he's addicted to the clout. And I think if he can get on the, the, the cans next week, we'll get a show from Chicago. Maybe just a quick like 30 minute one. Mm. Him and Jeff Dudo talking about movies. Yeah, that would be good. That would be nice. <laughs> um, there was some controversy in the wake of the FOMO show, the highly rated FOMO show. People loved it. Uh, Justin Durand, that fucking drip from Florida. So, so this is the hip hypocrisy of that cunt. So he quits this network because Vodka makes a joke about Kirk falling off the wagon. Now, what will Justin do now that Vodka's gone to the other network and dropped the F slur? And I, I'm sure there is some people going, I put Vodka up to dropping that. I didn't. I didn't, although I'm very appreciative of Vodka doing it because that channel's soon going to be fucking pulled off the internet. Um, you know, oh, look, I accidentally reported it. I'm joking. I would never do that. Um, That's not fun. But it's too far. They're going to hold that <laughs> against him forever now. Kirk's going to hold – Benners went on his stump show. He said he reported the, the, That's getting held against you for years. Yeah, that's it. Uh, now I yeah. emailed Erica. Now now yeah, I'm going to be like mate. That's the, he, he, yeah. 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 Um, uh, but, yeah, so Justin Duran quit. He was going to do a drip show for this network. Um, yeah, so, so this is – like the men has been a fan network. In some ways it's never been stronger – and in some ways, it's also falling apart very quickly. Um, you know, I think that the, the content is here is very strong, um, but it, it's it's sparse. <laughs> it's like we're like Native Americans, you know, like we, we basically got wiped out <laughs> Trail of Tears, but we have a few casinos still going. You know, that's that's what we got. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. Kirk's like the white man coming to um, America he is. and destroying. Us. Um, he is. That's a, another group. Now, another great bit of entertainment this week, and this was funny. Did you see Blind Mike with Lauren Compton? I saw Twitter clips. I haven't seen the full thing yet, but it was, from what I've seen, it was very funny. It was impossible not to stare at her breasts the whole time. because Great front porch. I mean, those... Those cans were fucking out on full display. Like, did she think, well, Mike's pretty blind, so I've really got to get him out for him to see them because, boy, did she, she knows what she's out. doing. Yeah, she knows what she, she's doing. Yes, sex sells. And uh, no one can sell a joke like Lauren Compton. Like, if she was doing Gathering the Goats with us, she would be, like, wildly laughing at every pathetic joke we've made, and we would feel like the funniest people on earth. Like, she can sell a joke. Mike was funny. Um, 
Yeah, it was it was a great performance. Imagine you get a couple margaritas in her. She's like, she's howling. You know, she's howling. She mm, she uh yeah. she's that girl that's way too loud. But I it, from what I saw, it was good. I'm trying just to look now quickly, like because it definitely that the mm. epi- the Twitter clips with Mike had way more engagement than anything else but i'm just trying to see the youtube views if that's the same and i don't know it's too too early to tell but i thought maybe his episode would have more views than normal but too early to tell uh almost a hundred thousand in three days though it's pretty good for mike um i'm happy for mike because i find mike uh legitimately funny and um i look forward to watching this great what are some highlights some special what you gave he says he, oh what he said he had news about julie so he can type it in the comments if in the private mm-hmm. chat if he wants what's up oh no jay welcome oh, to the man is minute fan network this, this isn't what i wanted hey man is how are you good welcome um, great great well, to see you are you have you recovered yeah. from being bitch slapped by julie's brother or cousin it's alive see that's what that's what i'm here for i'm here the fun I, we gotta stop talking crap about me not fighting my own battles. Are I you on the bus? Th- can you, can you, you, what's coming out of your mouth? He's spitting out food. Potato chips. I was trying to have some chips ready disgusting. for his minutes, but besides the point. That was disgusting. <laughs> he did not Angry beat now. me up. He fell asleep in a chair and he, he would not leave EA's hotel room just like I wouldn't leave his hotel room last year. And nobody's talking about Julie's brother being blackout drunk, not able to get out of the hotel room. I don't like that he's not being the subject uh, of after the show. He didn't touch me. He just talked a lot of shit. Okay. All right. Any, and any other hot takes from the weekend, Jay, before I kick you out? Julie's extremely sexual. Um, she hated me at first, but then she came on to Montante and they left. I think they did stuff in between, like, BA and... Jay, you don't want to know. That? You don't want to know. Would you hit that? Thanks, Jay. She's very pre- like. She's Jay, very would you friendly. hit that? She's too thin for him. You don't. You Dude, don't even Jay know. Would tear that you, up. You, you, you know how people were shocked that VD was short. I think people are shocked that Julie is attractive up close. She's a baddie. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Jay. He's I didn't so want old. that for the record. I didn't want that. I, uh, I just no, wanted. No, it's, uh, look, anything goes what? on this network. I'm not afraid wow. of having Jay on. Wow, that was dangerous. I was just hoping he didn't drop the F slur after you. Yeah, I, that I thought that was coming. I thought that was coming. <laughs> I thought that was coming. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Okay. I, I do want to ask you um, about the Mayo show, the highly divisive Mayo show from last Friday. Now, I'm a Mayo guy, but even I was annoyed at Mayo in that show. Like, he, he had a stinker and it, you know, for all the Mayo fans out there, it, it was it was hard to defend him. But, you know, he goes in, everyone's nervous ahead of the Portland weekend, and he just, I don't know, like verbal diarrhea, but not in a good way. Um. So how was it different than, like, the last two or three Mayo performances? Because he lost like, it a couple performances ago, and I, ha- I, I didn't even listen to this episode. I stopped listening. He's gone. Great. So we lost VD. So do you listen to KMS anymore? Hello? Well, I don't know who can hear me if I've dropped out or VD's dropped out. But does VD even listen to the show? Like he just skipped the Mayo episode. Like I think. If you listen to the show, you should, you have to listen to the Mayo um, episode. It's almost like penance. Um, so we've lost VD. He's gone. Or is it me? It's gone. Anyway. So, yes. Um, the Well, we've lost VD. We have lost VD. All right, I've got some listener questions here. I'm going to take the listener question. You're back. You're on mute. And he's gone. RIP VD. Well, great stuff. Um, yeah, you just said five minutes ago he's not listening. You're right, Don. VD's given up the show. 
All right, so I've got some questions, um, some listener questions. The first one is from I State the Obvious. What will it take for you to unblock Don the Jeweler? Well, Don the Jeweler has been unblocked. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, apologies, my cord was only 90% plugged in. Um, okay, idiot. Um, so, Mayo. Yeah, so you didn't even listen to the show. Like, do you listen to December KMS anymore? Yeah, December 2nd was the time before this Mayo was on, and I thought it was so bad that I, I was like, I'm not going to listen to Mayo episodes. I'm just not interested wow. in the whole bit. The bit is run its course. I like Mayo oh, too. Wow. It's just, that's, this is what happens news. when Kirk feeds into bits too much. They It's going to happen with mm. Steve from Gloucester too. Um, it's just, it runs its course very, very quickly. I used to love the Mayo shows. Now, not for me. So I normally like Mayo's questions, but I did not find any of the questions he was asking Kirk in this recent period particularly interesting. So I, I normally like Mayo's annoying inquisitorial nature but it just wasn't interesting this time and everything fell flat it was just a fucking disaster um so um when, when i take over as producer i will think very long and hard about when mayo's brought in next um even though i like the guy yeah um i think he needs to just take a break for a little while i'm mm. looking at that tweet from december 2nd because i said it was by far this is by far Mayo's worst performance. Kane agreed. Uh, Garbage Munch. Did you meet? Oh, wait, you weren't there. Um, I, I did see Garbage <laughs> Munchkin was at the show. Um, I might have met him Tony at the Wilbur. Cass. Did you meet him at the Wilbur? Might I love Munchkin. Garbage Munchkin. Bring back the polls. Mm. You like really dumb people. Like I, I've, You like to befriend the dumbest fucks in this community to make yourself like who? smart. Like who? Like, well, you surround yourself with dogs all the time. You work with dogs. Then Jay, Garbage Munchkin, uh, Montante, like, you know, just, you know, very base level humans. That, and it an makes you feel special. To, it's an insult to compare that caliber of human to dogs. Dogs are smarter than all, <laughs> every single person. Yeah, far more intelligent <laughs> and capable than everybody you just mentioned. Um. All right, well... The, that was yeah. So the Mayo show was a disaster. Um, the the only other thing I I do, I do want to say. Um, do you agree you with know, Mayo know, then not going to the show the next night, or do you think that was a bitch move? That was a bitch move, and fucking hell, I said it on the FOMO show. If if he'd done it, if he'd had a good show on Friday, he'd have been there people, taking pictures. He'd have been there. Absolutely, but the fact on that stage the, with the his shirt off. Was, Yes, yeah, he'd have been yeah. up there with those two fucking losers, Pat Ford and John and Warren, and yeah, um, yeah. So um, I want to get into the listener questions, um, and obviously any topics you want to bring up. But you know, if I, I'm just looking at the network across the street, you had Mike and the Minifans fans tonight, which was a disaster. You got the Beyond Average podcast, which is Mick, and he had Justin on last night, but then. He also um, had he has Christian on. I mean, Mick's fine, but twice a week is way too much. You know, you've got Josh doing his stupid fucking show with someone who's not even a minute fan. You've got Robbie V, who can't even give his locks of the week. Now, like the only value Robbie had was hit the lock of the week, and he can't even do that. You're gaming with Gus that's fallen off a cliff, but that is a good stoner show. I'll give it that. Drips in the office, no legs. It, people use too that much to go hype. To sleep now. I like I like yeah. um Pat um I Again, don't know John that well. Too, too much, much bits. hype. Too many bits. Too much bits. Too self aware. Too many bits. Yep. Uh, it's not even like the joke's done now. Like the fact that they're boring, they're actually boring. Like and you know I call him Fat Ford now after his performance <laughs> on Saturday night. Um, A lot of um, people saying BA yeah. is packing on the pounds too, which I disagree. BA with. is huge. <laughs> like. You know, on the KMS scenes, they say the camera adds 10 pounds. The camera added like 100 pounds. It's like BA has just been blown up. Like someone's, you know, blown him up like a ball. But BA is, that's what Italian, he's a true Italian. Like Steve from Gloucester is an American Italian. BA, his dad, straight from Italy. BA is a real paisan. He's exactly what Italians are like. That That's a good representation mm. of the Italian community. 
Uh, he's not fat really? though. He just he has a huge torso. Like he's just a a big guy. Really powerful. He's just not like Jack, but he's just like big. Mm. He's just big as fuck. Yeah. But it's not. He's not like yeah. a fat ass. Like uh, like I've seen him play soccer. You know, he's good. He's a good athlete actually. Mm. What do you think of uh? The, what do you think of the Kansas City Chiefs signing this rugby player? Ah, it was a bit. It was big, big news here. Big story. Um, big, big, big news. Yeah, it was. anyway, I don't even know Jordan Malafute or something. You don't know who uh, he is? Anyway. No, 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 no. A new one. The What's Chief his name? Uh, he, has, he has three names. Um, give me one sec. Um, okay, anyway, I want to get back to KMS because I'm not Don't you watch rugby? Show, but... Oh, no, you're a cricket Yeah, guy. bits and pieces. But I do watch a bit of rugby. Anyway, so Drips in the Office is a fucking disgrace. Uh, the, the BO Boys show, I've got to say, is probably the best show across the street, maybe even better than KMS. And I don't know if you heard, but the BO Boys are doing a live show in Boston, and their special guest will be one Kirk Seamus Minahan. So Minna fans wow. out there, if you want to see Kirk in person, BO Boys, keep an eye out for that. A KMS catch-up is literally Confused Duck doing something that the producer should be doing. Um, so that's nice of him to do that. You've also got the print now. The producers show that they did, and tell you didn't watch. If you didn't watch the Mayo show, I'm not no watching the producers. I saw yeah. the clips on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was it. like Justin is so boring. Coleman, well, we know is boring. This was just two of them speaking in a monotone for half an hour. I mean, fucking, you know, they're so fat and happy now. They got through the Portland show. Well, you know. Bad luck, guys. I'm looking over your shoulder now. Like, not literally, because that's impossible, but figuratively, I'm looking over your shoulder and, you know, I'm waiting for one little wow. mistake and I'm going to swoop in and take the job. I'm going to uproot my life. And and I'm, and and I'm telling you, the first thing I'm going to do is fire John from Scranton from the Kirk Minahan Show Network. That's the first thing. Are you the type of guy uh, that just a, a, are you the type of guy that just abandons your family and starts a new life or are you moving them over with you? <laughs> no, um I would um, not abandon my family. I would just leave come without them. Like I would partial uh, leave soft abandonment. Yeah, yeah, partial abandonment. It, like I think they it, want to be abandoned. My kids are old. Oh, yeah, know, they're not little kids anymore. And yeah. my wife would be like go and never come back. So she'd be like <laughs> You, you fucking settle down with Julie for all I care. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, and, and and I think it's about, um, you know, just following a dream. You know, you got to follow your dream. So, um, um, I did have a comment too as well about um, mixed show. I like Christian, but the best version of Beyond Average is Mick solo. Uh, just ranting. I think when he's playing the host, he he doesn't get to shine as much. He's better when you he, you just get to hear him ramble and you hear his inner monologue. Like that's all that yeah. he's just un exactly. Christian kind of is way more sane and waters it down and puts Mick in like host mode where he's like, oh hey, did you did you hear about this? When really the best version of Mick is like telling Montante that he's going to kill him in like a, a 17 mm. minute rant episode. Like that's the best. Yeah, version. Like what, what I think is funny is like, you know, it's Christian and uh, Mick thinking they're just going to do a normal talk, talk show. Like people yeah. want to hear their <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, thoughts no. on the news of the day, like them reacting <laughs> yeah. to what's happened, um, you know, and I think it's pretty clear. No one wants to hear from them. Like it's good. The first 10 minutes where they talk about KMS is interesting, but then normally fucking goes way downhill after that. Uh, and twice a week's way too much. Way um, too much. All right. Okay. Questions. Questions. So I state the obvious. Well, when were you blocked on the jeweler? I've unblocked on the jeweler, AKA red from Maine. I just figure it's actually too easy. Like, Red's got so many accounts now, he'll be able to find my tweets. I may as well just unblocked on um, and just let bygones be bygones. Um, I state the obvious. Why did you let BA join the FOMO show? He is the most responsible for the collapse of KMN. Now, I'm going to give everybody a little window into my psyche. I only got people on from across the street from the FOMO, on the FOMO show hoping they would get in trouble. 
Like that was my <laughs> only plan was that one of them would say something stupid and Kirk would throw them off the network. And unfortunately it didn't work out that way, but I had if only BA Dr. Tom Vodka Tom could have said the F word last week. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, On this that was the plan. That was the plan. Yeah. So, um, unfortunately, I allowed BA on and BA was sending me messages afterwards. I'm glad we're friends again. And I'm like, I'm doing this so you'll get fired as host of Mike and the Minute fans. And then I'll say, you're not welcome on this network. And it'll be you doing meeting of the minds once a week with John and Jay again. But it didn't work out. My master plan didn't work out, unfortunately. It still might work out because BA is a huge Mena fan. And he wants to come home. Trip him up. He's, he's he dipped his toe he's into the to. idea of doing it and then he's you know recoiled back from it but eventually mm. uh he will he will be home he knows he knows he's he's out yeah. of place yeah the funniest was um beanbag ron who i called and he was in the car with his wife and he was petrified like i think he had an inkling of what was going on like he was like mm, they're trying to set me up here aren't they um anyway it didn't work so that was why i let them back on they're still banned i do agree ba is the worst uh, michigan man would you accept Kirk's apology for trying to sabotage the network by nuking his own YouTube channel, which is now a mess to find the main show? Isn't I'm that not Florida Drip to... guy? Isn't that Florida Drip? No, yeah. no, Michigan man, someone else. Um, someone else. I'm willing to accept Kirk's apology. Absolutely. Oh, that yeah. Uh, we yeah, all yeah. make mistakes. We all make mistakes. This has obviously been an all-time mistake from Kirk. One that you know, threatens the very fabric of our society. Um, so, um, yeah, I would accept his apology. And I think, you know, ironically, I think the separation of the networks has brought me and Kirk closer together. I feel we've never been better this is the, the This is the first episode of Gathering of the Goats that he hasn't joined. Uh, and mm, he wanted and the link. We were like, Kirk, rest. You need to take time it's, off. It's, it's so. like you said you were taking this week yeah. off, and it's also after 10 p.m., which I know is tough for you. Yeah. 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 So, um, so you know, Kirk and I have never been better. We, you know, we're often trading messages about John's performance. And, you know, I'm that little little birdie in his ear all the time. But, um, you know, I, I think through this great trauma, um, you know, positive stuff has come out of it, like me getting the job as producer. Suburban tug time. Do you think VD will be named in Dave's note? So I'm, I'm assuming that is his suicide note. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if David can read and write, but um, I don't think I don't think so. I don't think so. He reached out to me when the Chief won the Super Bowl and said congratulations. So it's more of Montante's fault, to be honest. Definitely. Um, he right, kind Ted's of got the ball rolling there. That was really yeah. his master plan. Yeah, Ted Sarandis now. You identified Ted Sarandis at the Wilbur through some great forensic analysis of the photo. Stop flirting with yep. your dog. Cargo Take shorts. Cargo short king. I saw that same person at the Portland show. That's all really? Saying. Yeah. So I think, yeah. It, I think it's either the same Minifan or it's Ted Sarandis. If or it's just some random guy, which I know it's not, it's been confirmed to me that it's Ted, that would be really funny if there's just some guy – who mm. doesn't even know he's getting dragged online for yeah. – yeah, that would be funny. But, no, it was Ted. And do you think you using Ziggy Robinson's real first name a couple of weeks ago has made him run away from the rundown? Wasn't he on it recently, though? I don't know. I, I thought that for a little while. Yeah. It. He was on the uh, – I believe he was on the most recent one. But I up until that, I did think uh, that, that that played a part in it. Um which Z Ziggy wants to have it both ways. Like he wants to go on Facebook and look at your aunt's pictures to try to find something about you. But then if you say his first name, which there's hundreds of thousands of people with the same name, he's like, oh, it's, everything's too serious. It's too far. It's too far. Yeah, he's um, a massive hypocrite. Massive. And like I mean, you, it's not like, yeah, like you can totally say his first name's Joel. His first name's Joel. Go find him, everybody. Yeah. Good luck. Go mm. find Joel mm. with that. Yeah. Ooh, no, look. If I can take yeah. off your there, mask there's and, not much and, to find and, and anyway. He's, most, he's a boring yeah, he's most guy. forgettable meat <laughs> person. Um, you know, all I've heard is you know, he knows Bradfoe and all those radio people, so he's probably got mm -hmm. some connection to the radio business in Boston somehow. Um, but who cares? I mean, fuck him. Um, um, all right, Ted Sarandon, speaking of doxing, but the people. but the run the rundown does suck 
without him. He carries that show. When it's just Sheldon mm. and Red or just Red and a guest or just Sheldon and a guest, that show is brutal. And the ratings have reflected it, as I notated in a post, that almost – I think it was almost a 50% reduction in views since they left this mm. network. Oh, the, the, the views on the network across the street are falling off a cliff. Um, there's, you know, and, uh, you know, they're missing a passionate CEO at the top. You know, I used to fight mm-hmm. for my creators and, and it got the best out of them. At the moment, they'll just chuck any shit up there. And, you know, now their their attitude is just throw a ton of shit at the wall and see if it's sticks. It's like there, uh, there should you know, never BA, be- BA's, dad, BA's dad cooking spaghetti. He just throws it against the wall and waits for it to stick. There should be no... There should it should never be four shows in a row in one night. Nobody is gonna watch four hours of content in one night, and then there's mm. new shows the next. It's too much. You have to spread it out better. You have to hit the dry spots better. Um, it's it's just you have to be a little bit more strategy. selective. The lack of strategy. A little bit more the, selective. A little bit you more know, selective. I would say, Mick, I really appreciate what you're doing, but once a week could be plenty for you and Christian. You know, Josh, I'd be saying, Josh. Thank you. Fuck off. Start your own podcast feed if you want to release that crock of shit. Drips, I'd be saying the bit is tired. Now actually do a show or fuck off. I mean, anyway, this is my takes. Um, was Ted Sarandis' question. We never got to them. Um, which is an easier dog to train, a pit bull or a basset hound? A uh, pit bull would be much easier to train than a basset hound. The, the issue with basset hounds I mean, if you're trying to just train them to be a house pet is that they have very strong uh, genetics that defy house pet logic. They're very in tune with their nose. Um, A pit bull is definitely more malleable of a dog. Now, if you're looking to train some tracking, obviously you would want a basset hound, Um, but pit bull would be the easy answer there. Okay, there you go, Ted. Thank mm-hmm. you for getting an, got an answer to that boring question. James, an interesting comment here. VD had the best rundown ever since the network came back. Hard to argue. And Hard to argue. actually, we'll be we'll we'll be um wrapping up gathering the goats soon. But if you do have any questions, you can put them in the YouTube chat now. Um so yep. if you've got any last minute questions, um, you know, the goats are taking counsel at the moment. We're, we're taking questions. Um, you know, this this esteemed panel um is ready for you. Um Ted Saran, a couple more questions. I'll, I'll humor Ted. Was the FOMO show the worst of your broadcasting career? Well, he must be directed at me because you weren't on the FOMO show. And Ted, mm-hmm. I loved the FOMO show. One thing I've become it more was great. Um, appreciative of is the live vibe that you can you can get sometimes, you know, when there's an event going on. I mean, sure. And when things are moving that fast, sometimes you get stuff wrong. Oh, I was 50% full. Oh, I was 60% full. Well, whatever. You know, it turns out I worked out. So I said it was 50% full. People there said it was 80% full, which would mean it's probably about 65% full. Um, yeah. So that's just the, the way the world works. And, and that sort of mathematics is infallible. Um, but, you know, Ted, I love these sort of live shows. And, you know, that's the beauty of the men as Minifan network. We're kind of, you know, we're unfettered by the, you know, the strict control that Kirk um, exudes across the street. And, and but uh, what people forget is that we are also the majority. There's more people not at the live show than at the live show. So there's. That's right thousands and thousands of fans who are interested in hey what's going on what have you heard there's i would argue more people interested in the fomo show than the actual live show um just because of the simple barrier of entry easter tickets some people live across the world um so i i thank you benners for giving a voice to those of us who um don't have to just travel a few hours for a show yeah and also um you know, a bit of sometimes FOMO comes out in a little bit of bitching. You might get a bit angry. You might throw out some wild takes out there. But that, you know, that's the frustration of, of not being there, having a great time. And, um, yeah, it was tough. It was tough not being there. Uh, Ted, so that's that's another reason I want the producer job because then I'll be at the fucking live events. Like, the, Good point. I think, anyway, if Hopefully. I can be bothered. Maybe I'll delegate it. Maybe I'll just be like, just you take care of this, Justin. I'm taking the night <laughs> off. Watching cricket. Um, 
And last question, Ted Sarandis, is the KMSN sacrificing quality for quantity? Ted, we raised yes. that before, and you know my answer. That is a yes. Um, well, look, no, no questions. Apart, I'll take Don the Jeweler's question here. Now, you and Tom Shattuck, VD, had a little tete-a-tete -tete online regarding uh, laws around pit bulls. Um, are you going to be debating, Tom? I, yeah, I told him I'm, a, I'm available. Um, <laughs> It's uh, he said he was going to talk to Alice. It's a uh, it's an evergreen issue, so I don't think there's mm. good, but it will happen uh, one day. Maybe the next time a pit bull mauls a small child to death, we can do it then. It's going to happen what sooner you, than not. So. Mm, well, hopefully, mm. it's one of their kids, just to put them out of their misery. But, um, what, what do you think happens first? The Justin v. Jeff Lowe Star Wars trivia or the pit bull debate? Um, probably the pit bull debate, probably. Mm. Because yeah. we never – that Star Wars thing fell flat. Um, well, yeah, yeah. I'd actually like to do – and you're not a Star Wars guy, but I'd like to do a Star Wars special on the Men as Men Fan Network. Uh, Justin's going to come on and we're, we're just going to talk talk Star Wars. Talk, talk I, the I love that. Universe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, listeners, viewers, thanks very much for tuning in to Gathering of the Goats. Um, you know, the, the Goater fans – the Mena fans, the VD fans, they're the best, they're the best goddamn fans out there. I mean, the the Mena fans, the people that support this network, we're here for you. You know, we're here for you. We we put our heart and soul into this show that we do occasionally, you know, if once a fortnight. And VD hasn't even listened to KMS most of the time anymore. So he's just winging it. He's just reacting to what he's I'm just saying. Winging it, yeah. He's just he's just looking at Twitter and going off that. So yeah. uh, but at least he admits it, unlike Josh Kamara and, and those people. But thanks for tuning in to Gathering of the Goats and uh, take care.